So last week I made the mistake of saying, it looks like it's going to be a quiet week. And we had all these people go through all kinds of issues. So in our prayer concerns, uh, keeping our prayers this day, Paul and Gail McKim, Beryl Ruth, Shirley Emmerich, Carol Lape, Bob Dutt, Chris Bayshore, Rod Spies, John Hopman, Kathy Shirk, Robert Gregory, Barb Kessler, Norman Forey, John Mattis, Mary Helena, John Fraunfelter, Eugene Moyer, Anna Smith, Grace Wenrick, and Chris Kennedy. We pray for all those affected by the hurricanes and by the wildfires out in California. Please keep all these folks in your prayers. And if there are other prayer concerns, please call us and let us know. We'll add them to our list. Everything remains the same, I think, this week, except Thursday night at 6.15. 6, there will be singing with Miss Linda. Uh, so if you'd like to chime into that and see that, every week will be someone different uh, leading that singing. Uh, so this week, Thursday night, 6.15, Miss Linda will be leading that. Otherwise, hold an evening prayer, 7.30 Wednesday. If you need something, call us. We're here for you. Will you join me in prayer? Jesus, teach us to be like you in all our ways. Teach us kindness, gentleness, generosity, and to be giving, forgiving, loving, and caring. Teach us to follow in your humble footsteps. Guide us to the place you want us to be. Take control. Mold and shape us into the brilliant beings we were always destined to become. Amen. The reading this day comes from Zechariah, a little prophet in the Old Testament, the seventh chapter, beginning at the eighth verse. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. The Old Testament Zechariah had an influence on the New Testament way out of proportion to the size of his little book. The New Testament contains 43 citations and allusions to Zechariah, which reveals the book's important role in the gospel and eschatological literature. It is clear that Zechariah had a profound influence on New Testament thought, was often quoted by others. Perhaps one reason why Zechariah is found so much in the New Testament is that he held, had already captured something of Christian thought. Nearly 600 years before Christ, Zechariah expressed thoughts similar to the gospel message of love and mercy. Listen to Zechariah's words from our reading this day. Render true judgment. Show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. Very similar, wouldn't you say, to a Christian code of behavior in the treatment of others, an enlargement of the golden rule of doing unto others as you would have them do unto you? Fishermen who earn their living catching crabs say that you never really need a top for a crab basket. When one begins to climb out, the others will grab it with claws and pull it back down. There are crabs like that in religious circles, unfortunately. They tend to be people with low self-esteem, so that they feel they must reach up claw-like and pull down any who seem to rise above them. By pulling others down to size, they have perverted the belief that they make themselves feel normal. The prophet Zechariah says that the way of the Lord is to lift up not tear down, to render true judgments, to show mercy and kindness, treat others in a manner that will elevate them, not tear them down. For in doing so, both you and the other person will be better for it. Barbara Lundblad shared in a sermon on the Protestant Hour some, well, many years ago. It happened one summer in a small Midwestern city. There was a gay pride march, and afterward they gathered in an auditorium for worship. At the front of the room, the minister of the Metropolitan Community Church was trying to begin the service. 
He could hardly be heard over the jeering group of protesters at the back of the hall. They had come from another Christian church in the city. Sinners, they shouted, repent of your sick and evil ways. The protesters got louder and angrier. The young, the young minister invited the gay and lesbian people to move forward, close to the front. That the whole group at the front turned to face the back. Shame. Shame. Shame, they chanted softly. Then their chanting changed. Taking their cue from the minister, they began to say, Jesus loves me, and Jesus loves you. Over and over, they said it. But then the group in the back stood up on tables and started shouting back, Jesus hates you. Jesus hates you. Jesus hates you. The words came with such violent anger that many of the gay people grew silent and began to fear for their lives. What would ever give anyone the right to say, Jesus hates you, to another human being? What sort of faith is that? What witness, so righteous, thinking they're so right that Jesus' name could ever be used for such hateful condemnation. I wish I could say that that story is not true, but it is. And I'm afraid this is where we find ourselves. And I don't think it's a good place to be. So I pray we can hear the prophet Zechariah, words from the Old Testament that point us so clearly to the new word and the way of Jesus, a way of truth and righteousness, a way of compassion and love, a way of justice and grace. Let us work to stop hatred, prejudice, and judgment. Let us lean into Jesus. We join me in prayer in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And just to put it in context, I was going to share this and then I didn't. That story comes from a resource that is over 25 years old. The story of that gay, angry mob. So what we're dealing with needs to be dealt with. And I surely hope we can land on the side of love on the side of grace, on the side of compassion. I surely hope we'll follow Jesus. So now I ask God's blessing upon us all, that the Lord may bless us and keep us. The Lord would let his light shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord would look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be safe. Please be well. Take care.